Today I'm going to dive into a topic that's essential for both web designers and business owners to understand, and that is web design pricing. So whether you're a business owner trying to understand the costs of a new website or you're a web designer seeking to understand the right rates to be charging, this video has got you covered. But before I get started, my name is Dylan Davino. I'm the founder of Davino Digital. We're an agency that specializes in building, managing, and optimizing websites for businesses in various industries. Over the past two years, I've been able to take my agency from $0 a month all the way up to above $10,000 a month, and I'm super excited to see where we can grow. All right, let's get into it. So there are essentially three different ways that a web designer can charge for building a new website or revamping a pre-existing website. So pricing strategy number one is flat rate pricing. Now flat rate pricing is essentially you setting a fixed rate for the project and then having a set scope of work as well. So an example of this could be, I'm gonna charge you $3,000 for a six page website and there's no if, ands, or buts. That's the scope of work, that's the price, the client's happy, uh, we're happy, and that's the end of the story. So how can a web designer decide how much they're gonna charge for that flat rate? So what I like to do is I look at the amount of pages and the complexity of the pages, and then between those two factors, I'm able to estimate roughly how long it will take me to build the website. And based on that estimation, I will multiply how long I think it's gonna take by my hourly rate. And then that is how you set a fixed rate pricing. Now, it isn't super easy to get good at estimating the cost of a project. Um, you know, essentially, you could be wrong about the scope of work, or you could be wrong about the complexity of the project. Uh, you could be wrong about how long you think it's going to take. So when it comes to flat rates, there are some pros and cons associated. Now, obviously, the client is really happy that you transparently set your prices and they know exactly what they're going to get and how much it's going to cost. And another benefit to this strategy is that you have incentive to work efficiently. And with some of the other strategies I'm gonna talk about in this video, there isn't necessarily an incentive to work hard. Although the cons associated with flat rate pricing are that you could be wrong about how long the project is gonna take, um, you could be wrong about the scope of work, and so if you do set a flat rate pricing and you estimated wrong, you're gonna be the one who bites the bullet. And another con to this strategy is that if you want to change the scope of work, you would have to redo the proposal, contract, um, and you know do negotiations in order to just change the scope of work. All right, pricing strategy number two is an hourly rate. And this is pretty self-explanatory. It's I'm going to charge X amount of dollars per hour that I spend on your project. Now, what do you charge for an hour of web design and development work? So this can be priced anywhere from 50 to $150 an hour. If you're a beginner, um, you know, probably closer to that $50 a hour range. But if you're an experienced web designer, you can charge anywhere from $100 to $150 an hour. And it also depends on the industry that you're working with and the platforms that you are working with as well. So if you're building a website with Squarespace, then you might want to charge a little bit less um, than if you were building it with a more premium service like Shopify or Webflow, um, which is much more complex and takes years of experience to actually be able to do. All right, so the pros associated with an hourly rate. Number one, the client knows exactly where your time is being spent and how much they're going to have to pay for it. And the second pro is that if you want to add to the scope of work, you don't have to renegotiate any proposals or contracts. Uh, all you have to do is add more time to the timesheet and get more work done. All right, and some cons associated with an hourly rate is that it leads to uncertainty for the client. So the client doesn't necessarily know how much they're gonna be paying like they do with the flat rate. And if you're a web designer and you're telling a prospect, you know, I think this is gonna cost anywhere from 20 hours to 40 hours of my time. Um, that's a huge range. And so you're basically telling them, oh, this could cost anywhere from $3,000 to $6,000. Um, that's a little bit frightening if you're a client um, and so try to keep your ranges pretty concise, keep them um, accurate as you can be. And one more con associated with hourly pricing is that you are actually incentivized to work slowly. And I know that sounds pretty bad, but it's just the truth. It's the reality of the situation. Um, you're being paid 
for the time that you spend on the project and so obviously when it comes to a flat rate pricing you have a fixed rate and then you try to get it done because you know that when you get it done you're going to get paid um, with an hourly rate you're just getting paid as the clock is ticking and so if you're a business owner keep that in mind um, an hourly rate is technically not the ideal way to go for a new website all right now before i move into pricing strategy number three just remember to leave me a thumbs up on the video and in the comments below let us know how much you're charging and what pricing strategy you're using thank you and let's get back into it all right and pricing strategy number three is value-based pricing now value-based pricing is charging x amount of dollars for the project because that's how much you think it is worth and so this could be a little bit tricky to grasp and tricky to even you know price out um, but the easiest way for me to describe it and help you visualize is that there are two prospects that I have and each of them want a six page website, okay? Now one of them is a Ma and Pa country store um, selling juices and organic fruits, okay? And then the other one is a hedge fund that has a billion dollars invested into it. So both clients want a six page website but one of them I'm going to charge $3,000 for and the other one I'm going to charge $20,000 for. And that's because the Ma and Pa Country Store doesn't necessarily need the website and they're not going to get as much from it as the hedge fund. So the biggest pro associated with value-based pricing, if you're a web designer, is that you are charging for the true value of your services. You're not giving them an hourly rate and you're not saying I'm going to build this amount of pages for this price. Um, you are going to get as much as that project is worth and so if you are making that client a bunch of money then you will receive a bunch of money in return. And the major con associated with value based pricing is that it can be a little bit tricky to grasp for web designers and business owners because if you aren't able to effectively communicate um, why you're charging a certain rate for a project then they're not going to understand and you might have lost the deal. Uh, although when you are describing value-based pricing or you're describing the reason that you charge them a certain amount of dollars, um, you should try to take the route of I'm going to provide you this website which will generate X amount of dollars for you or X amount of leads and therefore I think that the project is worth X. Alright, so to wrap up the video, there are a ton of different ways that you can charge for web design pricing. Uh, it can depend on who's the client. What industry are they in? What platform are you going to use? Um, what's the scope of work? How much experience do you have? And so these are all things to consider when you're talking about web design pricing. And one of my next videos is going to be talking about my specific pricing strategies and real examples of how much I charge for projects. So if you do want to see that video, leave me a thumbs up and let's hit 100 likes and then I will go ahead and make that video. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.